like to welcome everybody to the June meeting of the Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Commission. At this time, we'll call the meeting to order. As always, we'll start our meeting with the prayer and Pledge of Allegiance. And Eddie Miller is going to lead us in that. Eddie? Okay. We'll bow for a prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your many blessings. We ask that you help us make good decisions today. Please keep in mind the uh, storm victims uh, and their families and um, help there be peace on earth and goodwill to all. Amen. 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 Stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Eddie. Everyone should have received their packets earlier in the week. Um, as usual, Mitzi did a great job preparing that and had our minutes ready for us from the previous meeting, which was April. This time we'll entertain a, uh, any changes or corrections that need to be made to the minutes. And if there are none, a motion for acceptance. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. Thanks, Mitzi. We'll move now to new business. Item number one is uh, information regarding downtown and motion. And uh, I'll turn it over to you guys. Hey, thank you. We're glad to be here today. We're excited to uh, give you an update about downtown and motion. I don't know if you've heard about it before, but it's something you're going to start hearing a lot about uh, coming up in the next month. And we're ready to launch this thing. So uh, to give you a little bit of history, I'm going to go over some history of where we've been with this project. And Deborah's going to talk to you about where we're going uh, kind of the next six months, year, and then long term where this project we're hoping will end up. Uh, downtown in Motion is what we've the title of this initiative. And, you know, people have asked me, is Downtown in Motion a, a program? Is it a special event? And my answer is no. It's an initiative we're really starting in Murfreesboro. Uh, it's, uh, it was funded through the Tennessee State Department of Health. We got $10,000. Uh, and, and the goal of uh, Downtown in Motion is to establish walking routes so local residents can go to our downtown area, which is a great place to go walk. Uh, run, see local businesses, go shopping, uh, and we're also going to try to educate people about type 2 diabetes and how to prevent type 2 diabetes. So um, we've gone a long way. This project has evolved. We had a lot of great partnerships from getting to this point, and we're really excited. Now we're ready to just uh, launch this and uh, uh, end up in a great place. Uh, the city of Murfreesboro has been really the main sponsor of this. We've had a lot of community input. We've had a lot of uh, outside agencies help. But we've had great support from within the Parks and Recreation Department and other city departments. Uh, if you combine, you know, the city's uh, dedication to enhancing quality of life and art, uh, the Parks and Recreation side of trying to create and sustain lifelong activity that creates better uh, habits for families, you really end up with downtown emotion. Uh, downtown emotion, like I said, we are establishing these uh, walking routes to promote to get people downtown, because as you know, we all love the downtown area. It's a great place to go and work out and have fun. Uh, we've had a lot of city and county partnerships. We've taken in a lot of community input through community uh, meetings. We've had a city and state partnership, which we've done, uh, worked with them a lot in figuring out what the best way to present this whole initiative is. Uh, our city IT department has provided a website for us. It's working to develop an app for us. Uh, City TV is doing a great job for us, helping us promote this and get some uh, videos about it to get it on YouTube and get it online. And our new city uh, website st uh, staff that has uh, created a new website uh, has done a job, do a great job about presenting it. Now, uh, a little bit about downtown emotion. Like I said, we're presenting uh, these walking routes <coughs> through promotional uh, pieces like this trifold flyer. <coughs> we're excited. These two maps, like I said, have been developed through our planning and engineering and our IT departments. <coughs> we're working on the, we're, we've really worked hard to make this a, <coughs> now I've got it, <coughs> <laughs> to make this a uh, sustainable project and something that we can build on in the years ahead. Um, some of the benefits of the program will be, uh, we'll have, it will allow for programming sites for uh, agency that will give us challenge, challenge courses for the employers and uh, health initiatives for employers downtown. Uh, it's a format for growth to promote health and, and fight type 2 diabetes and to encourage new participation in the downtown area. Um, 
let's see here. Okay. Uh, the website will be a uh, will be updated on a regular basis. This is part of our new city website. There is a QR code that will take you to this uh, page, and we will have the maps available there, uh, the routes, the walking routes. You'll see that in just a minute. Uh, but uh, we're really pleased at the way our QR code process and our app process is coming together. Um, here's a, an image of the measured walking routes, walking or running routes downtown. And what we're, our intention is to give people an idea of how many laps you would have to make, say for a mile, or maybe you only have a 10 or 15 minute break and you want to get away from your desk and wake up, then you might just do a quick lap around the block. But uh, you can, you know, document and keep up with your mileage. By having the mileage uh, measured out like this, the, uh, the larger employers can have competitions, um, whether it be weight loss competitions or mileage competitions. Um, but uh, now, and then if you're a, more of a runner or jogger and want a longer route, um, you can go all the way down to Middle Tennessee Boulevard from the square and back, and that gives you 2.2 miles. Beautiful uh, ambiance and setting, and uh, you know this is a, a promote uh, type two diabetes. That if you exercise 30 minutes a day for five days a week, you can help prevent type two diabetes. But it's also a great opportunity to promote the uh, beauty and ambiance of our historic downtown area. <laughs> He's going to let me keep going. Um, we have created several. Uh, Promotional flyers, this is a, uh, uh, this will be a flyer that you'll see uh, around downtown and in your offices. Um, and then there's also an educational piece that will have more detail about how to eat better and, <coughs> and uh, how often to exercise and et cetera. As I mentioned, the QR code is going to be uh, specific to the website. Uh, the app is being developed to be expandable uh, through the years, um, uh, the app is being developed by a volunteer efforts, and so it's really very time consuming, and it's really a twenty-five thousand dollar freebie. To be quite honest, the the time amount that that uh, one of our employees with the city is is giving us. So it is happening, and we're ex excited about expanding it into the future, where you can link into uh, restaurants that will have special health menus and uh, various specials of the day for lunch and etc. The measured routes are going to various around various popular destinations. Um, connections will connect you with local restaurants as I mentioned and it's also going to provide uh, educational opportunities for the residents and the visitors in our area. Um, Downtown in Motion, we're developing a video, and we're going to, we have a 30-second uh, piece we're working on and a 90-second piece we're working on. We're going to use Facebook. We're going to use YouTube. Uh, we're going to have educational text over the videos that uh, talk about not only the downtown and the maps, but it also will have uh, info about how to prevent type 2 diabetes. <coughs> so um, we're really working on it being a sustainable project. Uh, the state of Tennessee, the Tennessee Department of Health that has granted us this $10,000 opportunity has been very excited uh, about the, the uh, project that we've selected and the way we're developing this. They asked if uh, we presented this slideshow a few weeks ago and they asked if we were going to apply for a second grant and we said, well, no, we want to we work on making this one really sustainable over the next year. And they loved it. They like Great, you know, that's what we want to hear. We want to give our money, be donating and granting uh, the money to a process that's going to be ongoing. Um, okay, so our launch date is June 27th. At, uh, that's a Thursday. And from 11 to 2 p.m., we will be located at uh, the corner of Church and Main, that's next to Shacklett's Photography. And we'll be distributing maps and educational information, and it will be an opportunity for you to receive a promotional item. And our promotional items include pedometers, which you all have on your desk there, and uh, water bottles and T-shirts. And we've been able to uh, um, 
to develop some great looking promotional items. In exchange for the promotional item, all we want is a signature and a pledge because as you know, we have to document to the state, and this is their way of saying, yes, we have reached over 1,000 people, 2,000 people, you know, face-to-face -face, uh, with this program. Um, we also plan to visit the local employers. There's 14,000 people that live and work and travel through the downtown area every day. So there's some large employers. We're going to visit and talk with them about the benefits of the program. Uh, how they might want to incorporate it in with their health program. Um, and uh, also we're going to have uh, lunch break activities to encourage people to get out and walk for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes during their lunch break and maybe run downtown and have a bite to eat as well. Uh, we're also going to visit community groups and churches with their promotional material and uh, spread the word. There's something like 17 or 18 churches in our square mile area down here. So that's going to be a great opportunity for, for spreading this educational information. So we've really got it set up for future growth. And um, if you want more information, uh, keep an eye on the website at www.murfreesboro.tn.gov backslash downtown in motion one word. So uh, do you have any questions? Nate, you want to add something? I'll give it another trust. <laughs> We'd be glad to entertain any questions you might have. Any questions for Nate or Deborah about this program? I think it's going to be awesome. Yeah, we're, we're really excited about it. And like I said, I think uh, this, this project is becoming something that we're going to you know, track for years to come. And I think we're going to look back and think that we started such a small place. The intention is to develop the app into something that's really a GPS, GPS oriented. You can really track, but um, we're really excited. We've had, we've had a lot of great partnerships getting to where we are now. We've had such great community input, and the ideas that have come out of the downtown community has just been awesome and uh, made a lot of great friendships. So uh, it's, it, we're really excited, and everybody we tell about the program are going, hey, that's cool. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I think Good Deborah work. touched on it, but we're excited to incorporate some of our uh, wellness activities down there. We're talking of our, you know, our programmers right now to be able to go down downtown and use these routes to be able to do some walking and running. So we're really excited about it. Any, Any other, other questions? questions? I'd like to commend you for making a project of this nature uh, such a priority, and I look forward to the update and, and the follow-up related to this initiative. Great. Another partnership that we've gotten is MTSU has gotten involved, their wellness uh, department, to see if they can help us track this project over the next one to two years. So we're, uh, like I said, I think everybody's bought into it and really looking forward to the future. Great. Any other questions? Do we need to approve this program? Uh, it would be nice. Okay. You go ahead and approve well, it. Uh, need a motion for approval of the program as presented? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? <clears throat> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's Thank approved. you very much. Thanks, guys. Good work. Next item under new business is a consideration for approval agreement for the architectural services regarding the renovations at McFadden Community Center. Lanny's going to go over that with us. Lanny? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, um, I want to present to you today the renovation plans for McFadden Community Center. And I have a board. I'm going to move down here in just a minute um, to, to go over that with you. But uh, we've been working with Johnson & Bailey, specifically Lyle Lynch, uh, on uh, looking at the renovation of uh, McFadden Community Center. We've had it in our capital improvements program for several years, uh, and it, it would get bumped from year to year. And, and uh, in 2010, there was a portion that was funded, and uh, once we got into it, we found we were a little short. We went back in 2012 and asked for some additional funding, and uh, we've been working diligently to try to get that within price and within the scope of what we needed to do. So if I could, let me move down to the board and I'll just go over what we're going to or what we're proposing to do at the uh, McFadden renovation.
hopefully this is working. Okay. Uh, of course, you've got McFadden Community Center here. Uh, McFadden Community Center was built in 1968, believe it or not. Um, and I know I have been here for around 25 years, and there's been very little that has been done to the McFadden Community Center over that time. I know the last kind of big renovation that we did was in the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, when we went into an agreement with the Boys and Girls Club, and we got a grant from Community Development. And we went in and repainted the center. And we put a hardwood floor down in the gymnasium. It, it used to be uh, what we call uh, composition vinyl tile, the VCT. Uh, but it is a wood floor now. And, uh, and I remember a couple of years later, the uh, classroom portion, which, I, this, which would be this area here, uh, was re-roofed, uh, but that's the only thing that I can remember over the years that has been done to McFadden Community Center. What we're planning to do is um, kind of give it a real good coat of paint and go back through and upgrade the building, uh, hopefully so in the next uh, 20, 25 years. Uh, it's going to give us more good service, uh, but we'll just start right out here. You can see uh, and I've included a small plan in your in your packet. But you can see a small square right here. That'll be a little entrance feature that we'll put on the front of the building that will enhance the aesthetic beauty of the front of the building. Uh, as you come in, if you're familiar with the old building, uh, we have a small room here that we have a reception office in, and it's very difficult from that office to see anything that's going on in the center. What we're proposing is to take two old dressing rooms that honestly has been used for storage ever since I can remember, and um, I, I know I was talking to a couple of folks before the meeting, and they never recalled ever seeing those. So um, uh, in this portion over here, you can see these were old dressing rooms and locker rooms. Uh, and as long as I've been here, they've been used for storage. Uh, we want to repurpose those. We want to make that usable space. And so as you come into the building, what we're proposing is to take the locker room that's located to the south and create an office reception area here that gives us visibility into the game room gives us visibility into the gym, and provides a place where we can actually focus on the recreational activities that's going on and we have good visibility there. Plus, we'll put a small equipment room here. We'll take the locker rooms that's located on the north and put in restroom facilities. Right now, there are two restrooms in the front of the building that serve the entire building. And uh, there's a lot of folks that go in there. And if you think about how many people circulate through McFadden, uh, that is very, very minimal. So what we're doing is sizing the restrooms to the size of the building, much like an architect would do today if they were going through and looking at it. Uh, the other things that we're doing, we had two old offices here. We're taking the bathrooms and moving those offices so we're not losing office space. Uh, and we're re-roofing the gym and the little storage area back here. We're putting new HVAC on top of the gym. And then we're putting, there's, there's window units, or actually floor units, I guess you'd say, through the wall units. There are several of those that we've identified that needs to be replaced. And then we have one old heating system uh, in here um, that, uh, of, I, I kind of describe it as kind of operating on a wing and a prayer and bailing wire uh, that we're going to replace with five individual units, and that's going to give us an opportunity to zone different areas. I know when the daycare is operating, uh, it may be very cool in there, and they have to operate additional heaters. Uh, and then if we turn the heat up, um, we're burning somebody up over here trying to heat up this area. So we're going to try to zone those so that makes that better for those particular areas. Um, also, we're replacing all the doors, old doors and windows throughout the building. 
And we're putting in two doors here that when we're operating for recreation, we can shut off the rest of the building and maintain uh, the participants in this particular area of the building. Also, there's a small pad out here that uh, we had built through community development several years ago. We had a small shelter that was at Patterson. We thought we were going to be able to repurpose, but couldn't, so we're going to put a small shelter there, it's just a very small one. Um, but that gives uh, the daycare an opportunity to come out. It gives other folks that's using the shelter an opportunity to come outside. So uh, we think that's a, that's a good addition. Um, that's about it uh, as far as renovations. While I'm up here, do you have a question on any of those? Anybody have any questions for Lanny regarding the project? The total cost going to be any or estimated at the uh, the total cost of construction is estimated to be $499,569. Of course, anytime you enter into construction, we always try to put a little bit of contingency in there. So at the beginning of the construction, we put uh, a 10% uh, contingency. So the total construction budget that we estimated is $549,526. The architectural and engineering fees would be $52,377. We do have some surveying fees of $47,60. And then um, there was some asbestos that was found in an old building, in that building. Um, and so we'll have some, uh, about $25,000 in the construction for removal of that before we begin and then go back through some testing for uh, concrete and other monitoring. So another 6000 So a total of uh, uh, total project cost would be $612,663. Uh, in our capital improvements program budget, we have $633,820. So we're well within our uh, projected cost. Thanks, Lanny. Any other questions for Lanny? Do you have a projected start date? As soon as we get the architect under contract, uh, we anticipate that the uh, plans, um, getting them ready for bid, would be anywhere from three to four months, and then you're then you're looking at a probably another. Uh, six to eight weeks for bidding and uh, approvals. So we're probably, as soon as we get them under contract, still six months from the beginning of construction. And then the construction, based on um, the timing, because we have certain groups that are using the building and certain activities, we'll, we'll need to work with the contractor to make sure that we have minimum disruption uh, of other services that are there. Um, so we'd probably be somewhere a year in construction. Thank you. Good questions. Any others? There are none. We need a motion for a approval of the agreement for architectural services on this project. I move approval. Okay, thank you. We have a motion? Second. A motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> carries. Thanks, Lenny. Thank you. And, and let me just say this, too, that uh, once we get the plans together, I'll bring those back to the commission. Uh, we'll go over those. If there's anything that has differed from what I told you today, we'll, we'll bring that up to you and we'll, we'll share that with you. So, uh, okay. And if there's things that you see that uh, we invite you to go over and visit the building. 
Uh, if you see things that you would like to see us include or have questions about, feel free to give us a call. Thank you. Okay. Next item under new business is information regarding Brown's Mill. Angela Jackson is going to tell us all about it. Angela? Thank you. There is a piece of, of city property, it's about eight and a half acres, um, that is north of Murfreesboro called Brown's Mill. It is city property. It was purchased um, in the 80s by the city. Um, this is a site. It is located near the intersection of Browns Mill Road and Lofton Road um, near the community of Las Casas. Um, at that site, historically, there was a mill that was there at the site. It's located on the east fork of the Stones River, and there is a dam that is at that site as well. That dam currently is um, partially compromised. The water flows over portions of it that have been, um, um, that have been removed at some point over the years. Um, at that site currently as part of that pieces of the um, of the dam that are there have concrete and rebar that are that are in the water um, it's something that um, that the city has has recognized um, as not appropriate for public access at this point um, it is gated now as warning signs um, not allowing trespassing swimming fishing etc at that site currently the Tennessee um, Wildlife Resource Agency TWRA re recently approached the, the, the city um, in regards to removal of the low head dam at that site um, the the reasons that, that they listed for the dam removal which is a um, you know some, something that TWRA is is an initiative that they've started in terms of, of low head dam removal um, but the reasons specific to the Browns Mill Dam um, for removal is, are that low head dams present serious dangers to paddlers. This low head dam has exposed rebars, as I mentioned, making it especially dangerous to paddlers and damaging to kayaks and canoes. Um, because of these hazards, they create low head dam they create low head dams or liability excuse me, liabilities for landowners. Um, the other reason that TWRA had listed to us in some of their materials um, are environmental reasons. Removing the dam increases fish passage, improves flow, and increases water quality by decreasing the water temperature, increasing dissolved oxygen, decreasing eutrophication, which has to do with the nutrients in the water, uh, and allowing sediment to be distributed naturally. This dam also redirects the flow during rain events and is causing bank erosion. Removal of the dam will eliminate this erosion and decrease sediment entering into the river. Um, what TWRA is, is currently doing now is conducting archaeological surveys, fish and muscle surveys, and historical surveys. Um, city representatives from the engineering department, legal department, water and sewer department, and parks and recreation have recently met with TWRA um, to, to discuss and consider the project, um, have, have been working with them uh, to, to allow the studies to take place. Because there's been, um, I, I suppose, more increased activity in that area, we've received more questions about it. So I wanted to, to bring this update to you. Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Department has maintained that site now for several years. Um, it, is it is a site that is identified in the recently adopted Greenway Blueway Bikeway Master Plan as a potential site for river access to be a part of the Murfreesboro Blueway system. Um, that's something that. Um, could potentially be of interest to us through the project. There would be some opportunities as TWRA um, could potentially remove that dam. They might um, be able to make some improvements to the site that would reduce the cost to us in the future um, if it comes to that point. I wanted to give you an update um, at this time. The dam removal would be a TWRA project um, and funded through TWRA um, because of the potential future effects that it could have to our department. Um, in terms of that plan, I wanted to bring it to your attention, um, but there's no action that um, um, is proposed for this time on behalf of this committee. But I, I wanted to, to give you the update and answer any questions that you might have. Okay, Angel, thanks. Anybody have any questions? I do have one question. Sir. Which of these studies will reveal what impact that additional water will have on landowners downstream? Um, I, I'm sure that, that, that as far as the impact to the river, both upstream and downstream, um, that that's a consideration in those studies um, from, from the engineering aspect of, of what that um, dam removal will entail, the river returning to its more natural um, original corridor before the dams were, were put in and what that means. Um, because the dam's partially compromised now, um, it wouldn't be as impactful as the removal of some other lowhead dams um, here in Murfreesboro and other places. Um, that's not to say that things wouldn't change. Yeah. If you go look at it, Mr. Rodiger, about half of it is missing. Um, 
and then where the water has sought to go around the half that's missing, it's eroded out um, probably another, what would you say, 50, 75 feet of the bank. And, and really the river kind of channels around that. Now there's very little that, that goes over it, and, except when the water is up. And so... Uh, I think I'll just take a drive and look at it. It's yeah. a good idea. Yeah, it's a... Plus, you'll see the, the stone columns. I think those are very interesting. Where the mills sit there, um, uh, of course, the mill collapsed um, several years ago. But it was uh, it was an interesting uh, piece of property to look at. And these studies will be completed when? They're currently undergoing. I don't have a specific date for the completion. Um, I have been given a couple of updates from TWRA um, in regards to the historical studies and still some questions um, regarding the, the features that are left there, um, some of the, the, the columns and, and the decisions that would need to be made regarding those. Um, but I, I do not have the, the completed reports uh, or a specific date to them at this time. But let, let me reemphasize, though, as far as the, the parks and recreation, as, part, as far as our role with that, um, at this point, it's minimal. The, the impact that it could have to our, um, to our recreational opportunities would be in the future based on these actions. Um, so it's certainly of interest to us. But the, um, the plans for the, for the removal of the dam um, and the decisions that would be made for that um, would, not, would not come through this, this commission and the recommendations for it, okay. to my knowledge. Any other questions? Thank you for the information. Thank you. Next item under new business is uh, Lanny and Becky are going to give us a brief overview of the 2012 annual report. All right. We have our 2012 annual report. I know you, everybody can't see the cover from here, but uh, it, it highlights our renovated kids' castle and kids enjoying that this past year. And uh, did you want to start out with a statement, Lanny? Or? Well, just to say that um, we're really pleased with our annual report this year. Uh, Becky's done a great job with that. Um, uh, we've still got a couple of tweaks before we, uh, I guess, uh, print the final copy. Uh, she actually printed these on a laser printer for us uh, so we could have them at the commission meeting. But just some of the things I, I want to point out, uh, uh, just the sheer numbers, uh, as you go through and look at the number of people that come to our facilities and use our parks um, it is pretty amazing. I think I get uh, uh, kind of drawn back each time, each year. I, we take a reflection back and take a look at that. And um, I just think that, uh, you know, we offer 213 in-house programs, programs that we facilitate staff-wise. And uh, what we do is we count user visits. So, uh, you know, if Mr. Roediger comes to our facility twice a week, then he's counted as two times that he's visited. Uh, but we had 240,035 participants or user visits uh, within our programs last year. And uh, that speaks to the efforts of the staff that increased uh, 58,381 participants over the year prior. So uh, I know they're doing a great job. Uh, also, one of the other things that we're very proud of, uh, we know that uh, there are families that uh, do not have the economic means to uh, participate, and, and we've talked about that uh, for many years. And, and several years ago, we enacted a financial assistance program. Uh, the financial assistance program it's tied to the free and reduced lunch program at the schools. So if children qualify for free uh, lunch at the schools, then their admission into our facilities or uh, their registration fees are free. And for groups uh, that we uh, partner with, and you can see that we've got 167 different individual agreements with different folks throughout the community that we partner with, uh, we generally put that in their agreement 
uh, that they would honor our financial assistance programs. And uh, so we, um, we look at that and we equate it. Now, we do not list the number in dollar terms for the outside agencies, but just for us, uh, that equates to $376,785 in financial assistance that uh, uh, our department and this commission and the city council has, uh, has given to our citizens to make sure that they have full access to our facilities. So I think that speaks to um, uh, our community and, and what kind of community we are and, and uh, that we want everybody to have an opportunity to participate in our program. So with that, I'll let Becky go through with some of the numbers that we have, mm -hmm. and then we'll be able to try to answer any questions you may have regarding the uh, report. Before I start thumbing through the highlights, I just do want to mention that um, we will probably sometime next week make the annual report available on our website. So if there's anybody watching who would like to read through the annual report in depth, it will be available for them to download and look through. And the annual report contains information about how we're set up and our organizational chart. We have in here some of our awards and rec recognitions. We have nine TRPA awards that we received this past year um, that's on the performance of our department. We have information on our parks and some information as far as um, Barfield Crescent Park. We have pavilions that we rent out at different parks. We had 340 pavilion rentals, which brought in over $24,000 in revenue at Barfield Crescent Park. Um, the baseball fields throughout the year were used by various teams, a total of 242 teams with over with almost 3,000 participants using the ball fields just at Barfield this past year. Um, Oakland's Park has a pavilion that we rent, and there were 25 rentals, which brought in just over $1,000 in revenue. Out at McKnight Park, out there we have the McKnight Fields, we have Sportscom and Starplex, and uh, there is a pavilion out there to rent as well, and that had 59 rentals with $2,700 in revenue. We hosted nine tournaments, and also it was a spring fling, this, spring fling site in 2012. Um, the baseball and softball fields had 190 teams that uh, used the field throughout the year with over 3,000 participants. And we also have the football fields out there at McKnight Park, which was used for the Parks and Rec uh, Football League. We had adult and youth league with um, the adult flag football as well. Old Fort Park has, um, they had 188 pavilion rentals with uh, $8,700 in revenue. There are um, baseball fields out there that had 120 participants that used them, and we also have our Parks and Rec League, which uses those fields out there at Old Fort Park. We have 24 tennis courts at Old Fort Park, which was used by five high school teams and five middle school teams. And um, the Murfreesboro Tennis Association, they always host their tournament there, and they had over 200 participants in their tournament. And it's also a spring fling site in 2012. And there's also a section in here, we had Kids Castle, which was renovated this past year, which was quite the project. And uh, I believe uh, just by any time you drive by that park, it's well in use. People seem to be quite happy with the, uh, the new playground there. And we certainly enjoy some of the photos we have of kids having a good time out there. At uh, Cannonsburg Village, um, they keep track of attendance, whether it be just visitors, that come in or rentals, um, they have blacksmith conventions, Friday night concerts. So these are things that just attract visitors beyond programming that we offer at Cannonsburg. And they had over 42,000 people in attendance at Cannonsburg this past year. Patterson Park, which is, has the community center, their uh, basketball leagues had, for th both their spring and fall leagues, had 12 teams with 120 participants. The racquetball league had three divisions with 24 participants. And then uh, we have Rogers Park in there, too, and that had 32 pavilion rentals in 2012 with $1,550 in revenue. 
Then we have Richard Siegel Park, which is a neighborhood park and the soccer complex. And the pavilions at the park had 99 pavilion rentals, which was over $4,000 in revenue generated. The soccer complex, the um, Murfreesboro Soccer Club utilizes that and had over 425 participants. The Murfreesboro Parks and Rec Recreational Soccer Program had over 1,300 participants. And there also is a Hispanic Soccer League, which had 32 teams, which utilized the soccer park in 2012. And there's various tournaments held each and every year out at Siegel. And uh, it is estimated that they brought in almost $6 million in sales tax revenue in 2012. And uh, livability.com in 2012 ranked Murfreesboro as number five on their uh, most friendly soccer towns in the United States. So that was quite a accolade to receive. Then I have information in here on the Murfreesboro Greenway system, and I have in here all our trailheads and the amenities and the BART Park, and we also have the Gateway Island. And uh, the Gateway Island had 63 reservations, and they also have rental items attached to their reservations of the island, so that brought in a total of $25,000 in revenue. And then we have a customer satisfaction survey that we ran for one month, which was uh, the middle of, uh, or from the whole month of uh, December. And uh, some of the questions we asked was, does it do Parks and Rec improve the quality of life in your community? And 94% of the people who took the survey said, yes, it does. And uh, Really, 5% of that just didn't respond to the question. I believe there were only two people who did not feel that it improved their quality of life. Um, the other questions, um, parks and rec facilities, which were the most frequented. The most frequent, frequented was Sportscom, followed closely behind with Patterson Park, and then our, green, and our Greenway system, Tide Patterson Park, as far as the answers go. So those are three of our most frequented utilized parks and facilities. Then we had a section on rating our, our department. Um, as far as parks and rec facilities, how they would rate it, it was a, a scale of one to four, one being poor, four being very good, and five no opinion at all. And the average score was a 3.5, 3.4, 3.7, which means it's in between good and very good. As far as staff, the rating was 3.7, which is much closer to the very good rating. Our programs also fell into that 3.5 area between good and very good. Then we asked um, people to let us know how they would prefer to find out about our parks, facilities, and programs. And, and that's interesting, especially to me, as, as far as doing the marketing for the department, to know how people want to receive word. 71% um, of the people responded that they would like to receive an email, which we do through um, our Constant Contact e-newsletter. So that was encouraging. 63% um, of people find out about programs from friends. So word of mouth, which is probably one of the most old-fashioned uses of getting the word out, that is still highly used. So we definitely want to keep people happy so they keep telling their friends to come to our programs. 45% um, use the website. And right behind that at 44% is people who like to pick up our Rec Connection, which is our program guide. And then 30% are using Facebook and 24% are utilizing the newspaper. So I found that very insightful so I know going forward how to promote our stuff. Um, then we have a section on demogra demographics as to what are the ages and households of those that surveyed. And are, the majority um, of the households had people under the age of 18 and then next was between 18 and 40. The age of those responding, 33% of them were between um, 41 and 55, and 29% were between 18 and 40 who responded. And 65% uh, of the people who took the survey were female. And then we asked that we had various answers as to what part of the city they lived in and were they in the county and out of the county. So the, all that information's here. Page 19, I'm not going to go through it, but we asked them to write out comments as to how they felt about our parks and facilities or where we needed improvements. And uh, I think it kind of keeps in line in some of the comments where we needed improvements are places that 
are on our capital improvements plan to try to make some of these changes to improve some of these areas. So uh, there were no real surprises as far as the comments. And then I have four pages where I simply just list all of our use agreements. Lanny mentioned them earlier. We um, partner with 167 other organizations and agencies to just try and do all that we do and keep it going. There, We could probably just keep on creating more partnerships and running more programs, and there would still be a need. And then um, we go into um, the rental information. I broke that down a little bit. Um, just so you can get a visual on Patterson Park and Sportscom, we rent out various venues within all of those facilities. Um, Patterson Park, one of the, um, well, the biggest rent revenue or rental area is, of course, the indoor pool. It's very popular for birthday parties. And then our large dining room for various groups. Sportscom, their biggest rental was uh, the outdoor pool was more than half of their, or almost half of their rentals. And then the indoor pool was the second largest rental. And then we have um, attendance numbers. We've asked them to start keeping up with every time they rent, a group rents one of our facilities to let us know how many people would be participating so that we get an idea of the foot traffic with the uh, attendance. And uh, the Patterson rental visits were 35,170. Sportscom rental visits were 19,338. Then you add them sportscom visits, which is anytime somebody comes in and pays that general admission or swipes their pass to participate in our facilities, the pools. Um, sportscom had 183,063 visits, and Patterson Park had 142,825, which is a total of 380,396 people that walked through the doors of Patterson and Sportscom combined in 2012. And then we have field revenue information. I'm not going to go too much into that. But that is we rent out our soccer fields, the McKnight Starplex fields, the multipurpose field at McKnight, the ball fields at Barfield and at Old Fort Park. And all those rent field rentals generated $72,482.50 in field revenue. And then I have a chart that shows which fields were utilized the most which is Barfield Crescent Fields, the soccer complex, and McKnight and Starplex are definitely utilized the most out of those fields. And then in here I have a little bit um, spring fling revenues. We, the city of Murfreesboro hosts spring fling for the last several years. And um, the revenues for last year, spring fling admission, I believe, is it 10 percent? We get 10 percent. We get 10 percent of the, the admission fees and that was 10, 000, over $10,000, and then we charge for parking, which we get to keep all of the parking, correct? Right. Which was almost 15000 which gave us a total of $25,918.48 for hosting Spring Fling. Then um, I have more information on our pavilion rentals. Overall, in 2012, we had a total of 883 pavilion rentals with $48,800. $48,805 in revenue. And Gateway Island, I have that we had 63 reservations. And of those, 53 of them were weddings. So it has definitely become a popular wedding venue. We have walks and runs out there. There were six of them in 2012, and four were other events, things like graduation parties or corporate picnics. Then, as Lanny mentioned before, we have financial aid information. We base that on the, it's similar to how the schools process their free or reduced lunch. So we had 1,115 youth who received uh, full financial assistance to our parks and facilities, and there were 205 youths who received it. And we offer it reduced to adults. We don't give the adults free, but they get reduced assistance, and there were 653. So a total of 1,973 citizens of Murfreesboro participated in our financial assistance program in 2012. Then we have our budget information. This is a little bit difficult to do as far as our annual report is done on the calendar year, but as you know, our budgets run from July 1st to June. So basically, it's a comparison of two budget years back to back in here, just to see the difference. And 
really the biggest difference in our budget is the Greenway grant makes the biggest difference there as far as expense and, and revenue. And then I have several pages on our program information. As Lanny mentioned, we had 213 staff-run programs with over 240,000 participants, which is a 24.5% increase over 2011. So that is it's quite a jump in the amount of participants that, uh, and I believe we offered about 40 more programs than we did in 2011 as well. So our staff is working hard and offering more quality program and the word's getting out about it. And uh, I broke them down when you look through. It's a little confusing because we offer so many different types of programs. We have camps, which we run during the summer. We have monthly programs, something that meets one time a month, but every month, such as our bingo. Then we have seasonal, which is football runs in the fall. We have basketball in the wintertime. So those are programs that are just run certain times of the year. We have series. That is something that doesn't stick to a monthly or a weekly rule. We might run it in a set of six or a set of five. So those are series. Then we have special events, which typically can be our signature <coughs> department events, which are our larger one-time programs that many of them we run annual. One of them, like our 36th annual Uncle Dave Making Days is coming up. So those are typical of our special events. Then we have specialized programs, and those are those programs that are probably offered only one time, but they're not considered a one-time special event because it's not one of those big programs that's bringing in 10,000 people. So we have a, a, or there are cultural art type programs, so they kind of fit in their own. And then of course we have our weekly programs that meet every week. Yoga, water aerobics, volleyball class. So all that is broken down for you. It, it lists all the programs that our staff run and exactly how many came to each of those programs. And then we have information um, that Tom Sage provided me at Patterson Park. They ha do uh, partnerships and uh, the UT Extension provides health and nutrition for them. They did internships with MTSU, and Vanderbilt came in and did youth and senior programs. We have um, how the department, and, and at Patterson Park, is working with inner city youth through the first shot program and how they run uh, sports camp programs during spring and fall breaks and then in the summer. And then there's a section in there on um, Patterson Park and diversity, and they've won the TRPA award for uh, six times in the past 10 years for Outstanding Community Center, and they're offering Spanish to English programs, and that program was set up to handle 30 people, and they had over 150 people participate in that program. So those are the highlights of the annual report. Does anybody have any questions? Any questions of Becky about the annual report? I want to commend her for and the staff for just the, the number of programs we have and the quality and the variety and the, what, like a 25% increase in mm -hmm. participants this past year. Yes. Man, what a job. I could believe it when I came up with those numbers. I, I got out my calculator and I, I kept mm -hmm. <laughs> calculating to make sure that that is really what it said, but it did. <laughs> So and of course, it. we can't put everything in the annual report. These are really kind of the highlights. Um, but there's so much that that we do as a department, and I think it contributes to the fact that uh, you know we've got an active commission that's involved with the community, and you guys don't mind calling and asking for us to look at this or look at that, and, and we. Uh, we always try to respond, and we have citizens that call and ask for different types of programs or activities or ask us to look at certain things in the facility. Matter of fact, I got an email this morning um, that uh, was talking about porta potties. So uh, we, we go everywhere and try to respond and try to provide the best service we can, the most programs that we can. Uh, but the staff does a great job, Becky. Uh, did a good job putting this together, too. So if you have any questions, uh, we'll be free to be glad to answer. Any other questions so. for Becky about the annual report? All right, Becky. I think you're also, you're also the last item <laughs> under new business. Uh, you're going to give us a quick overview of some upcoming events. Yes. We um, 
are well into our first week of our summer camp programs, but we do have some spaces available in some of our programs. So we just want to encourage um, those out there, especially if they're looking for something for their children to do. We have a wide variety of summer camp programs. And uh, you may register at our administrative office at Barfield Crescent Park, Patterson Park Community Center, or Sportscom. Some are full, but there are a few spaces left, so I urge people to uh, look up our camp program on our website and uh, sign them up. Then we have our Movies Under the Stars started this week, and uh, Monday and Tuesday night both went very well. I went to uh, the Case and Lane Trailhead site on Monday night. And how that program works is there's a movie that is shown each week, but it's at five different locations throughout the week. So Mondays is at Case and Lane Trailhead, Tuesdays Cannonsburg, Thursdays Richard Siegel Neighborhood Park, Fridays Mitchell Nielsen Primary, and Saturdays Hobgood Elementary School. And then this started this week, which was June 3rd, and will end Saturday, June 27th. The movie starts at 8.30 p.m., and just once the movie's over, you can go ahead home. It is free to come and watch the movie. You just bring a lawn chair, a blanket, you spread it out in the grass, and just watch the movie. They do have concessions for sale. Um, they have popcorn and drinks to, to purchase. Um, every time I go, my, my daughter always has her $2 in hand to go get her drink and her popcorn. Um, but the movie schedule, um, there's copyright laws about where we can post them, so unfortunately we can't put it on our website and whatnot, but they can contact the main office and the phone number is 890-5333 to um, receive a list of what movies shown each week. Then uh, coming up pretty soon on June 17th, we will be having sign-ups for our youth football and cheerleading program. And the sign-ups are Monday through Friday, June 17th through July 12th, at Sportscom from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., at Barfield, the main office, and McFadden Community Center from 10 a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. And then they'll also have a few Saturdays out at Sportscom from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., and that's June 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th. The fee is $70 per player, and for cheerleading, it's $30 for the program and $45 for the uniform. But as far as specifics for the program, um, you can contact the Athletics Department at 907-2251. Then um, our, one of our annual big special events is the July 4th. We have the Rock the Pool Party, then followed by Celebration Under the Stars. The pool party um, will be at Burrow Beach, which is the outdoor pool at Sportscom. And that is Thursday, July 4th, from 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And it is premium admission for the outdoor pool. It's $4 for adults, $3 for youth and seniors. Um, they just have a whole bunch of activities and music playing to uh, rock the pool at Sportscom. And that's a picture of a kid who's just landed in the water at the bottom of the water slide. You see those feet. But something about those feet just said he had a good time on that water slide. <laughs> I was trying to figure out what that was. <laughs> you can tell it was I was, was kind of like Miss Rodiger looking at my map over there. I couldn't hardly <laughs> see what that was. <laughs> that, um, that same day, July 4th, we have Celebration Under the Stars. Um, just bring your families, friends, your lawn chairs, blankets, and uh, join us for the annual community event, which is at McKnight Park. There will be games and activities for kids. There will be music, fireworks, and refreshments. And the schedule, um, it's 10 to 4.30 is the Rock the Pool. From 5 to 8 is when we will have family games and activities, and they are all free. Then um, they start doing a sound check at 7.15, and 7.50 they'll do a welcome and introductions. From 8 to 9, starting at 8 o'clock, our uh, color guard from uh, the Murfreesboro Fire and Rescue Department will do, um, we'll present the colors, followed by the national anthem um, sung by someone chosen from the Murfreesboro Symphony, and the Murfreesboro Symphony will play. And then at 9 o'clock, the fireworks begin. So we would like everybody to come on out and enjoy the fireworks in a safe family environment. That's a, the fireworks are controlled and taken care of by professionals, and we would much prefer people to celebrate the July 4th in, in a safe manner. Then we have our 36th annual Uncle Dave Macon Days. 
um, which is considered one of America's premier summer festivals. I know people come from all over the country for that. It's a family-oriented or event that uh, has a blend of music and dance. They'll have activities for children, concessions, arts and crafts, trade demonstrations, photo exhibits, storytelling, and then on Sunday they do a gospel showcase. It's for everyone to come on out, and the dates are Friday, July 12th, Saturday, July 13th, and Sunday, July 14th at Cannonsburg Village. It is $5 per day for anyone 13 and older. Children 12 and under are free, and Sunday is free for everyone. And there's contact information there if anybody is interested in finding out more. The contact for that is Gloria Christie, and her phone number is 893-2369. And uh, really quick before I tell you where to find out about all our programs, um, some of you may be aware of this, um, the Murfreesboro Half Marathon, which added an additional 500 spots this year for a total of 3,000 participants sold out on June 1st in two hours and 11 minutes. So we're, we're kind of proud of the, uh, how that program has just grown and the, how people want to sign up for it. But we do have some alternatives if anybody is still looking for a spot in the half marathon. Out at Sportscom, Jennifer Joins is doing a half marathon training program, and she has a few spots left. It's $100 for the training program but you do get a registration for the half marathon. So if there's a few people who missed the deadline to sign up for that, they can register with Sportscom at 895-5040 and hopefully secure one of the last few spaces available. And for all our programs, any additional information, you can contact our office at 890-5333. Our website, we have a new website, which is fabulous, but it's the same address, which is www.murfreesborotn.gov slash parks. We also have our rec connection available at all our facilities, and we are on Facebook. Any questions about upcoming programs? All right, Becky, thanks for the update. As usual, a lot going on. <laughs> and that's just the highlights. <laughs> Any more questions or comments? Um, just a comment about Uncle Dave making day. It's going to be fabulous this year. The weather's going to be perfect. Uh, Mr. Smotherman, I think, is in charge of the weather this year. Is that right? <laughs> I'll, I'll take that responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> also, the, uh, added to that, uh, Saturday evening, uh, the featured event will be uh, Ricky Skaggs. And, the, he's uh, the Heritage. $5 to see Ricky Skaggs in concerts. Quite a bargain. So He's uh, the Heritage Award uh, winner. Yeah, Her yeah. Heritage Award with fantastic, and uh, so so we're looking forward to a great Uncle Dave making days this year, and uh, I think it'll be uh, yeah. the best ever. We think we'll have big crowds, especially to see Mr. Skaggs. I will not yeah. burn them up, and I will not drown them this year. <laughs> <laughs> I know uh, they had a uh, they had a press conference, uh, and uh, he he was there, and of course Ms. Scales Harris and. Mr. Spudman was there and spoke on behalf of the city, did a great job. Um, but he was a very eloquent speaker, and I enjoyed uh, listening to him. And I think that uh, people will enjoy coming and listen to his uh, his music, his concert, and and uh, his bravery. bravery. Uh, he he uh, he's very entertaining. Just just talking over the microphone, much less his entertainment. So, uh, some of the upcoming things uh, for the commission. Uh, I've been working uh, with SEC on uh, trying to get the prices together for uh, the improvements of McKnight Park and Starplex. Uh, also been working with Weiser and Company uh, on the uh, Barfield Crescent improvements within the CIP and uh, with Johnson and Bailey on the uh, sports club improvements. As soon as I can get those uh, done, uh, maybe by Next meeting or the next, I'll be bringing those to you uh, for consideration as well. All right. Is there any other business to come before the commission? Being none, we stand adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>